All right, so WandaVision, it's here, and it's in black and white, and it's in 4x3, so I was thinking maybe this review should be too. So let's do it. WandaVision. So WandaVision was, uh, I think it was announced back in like 2019 at D23. It's part of a huge lineup of what will be a very boisterous set of Disney Plus Marvel Studios exclusive Disney Plus exclusive Marvel Studios related TV shows. We're going to get like Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, a whole bunch of stuff coming in the future. But this show in particular is about Wanda and Vision and it's set up like a sitcom. And the question on pretty much everybody's mind since this show was announced is, um, Vision's kind of a little bit busy being, uh, you know, dead. So how exactly is this going to work? So, um, that's what the point of the show is, I assume. I mean, like, the, in the trailer, it's pretty, it's made pretty clear that people know that Vision's dead. And even in Far From Home, we know that people know that Vision's dead. So, let's get into what actually happens. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't review a show until, it, like, the whole season was over. I still haven't even reviewed Mando. I haven't talked about it at all on the channel, really. Um, and since we only have two episodes here of WandaVision, I was like, well, I'll just wait until it's over. But once I watched those two episodes, I realized there's a lot to unpack. Like, first of all, you know what's hilarious? What if a toaster made the same sound as a missile that killed Wanda's family? <laughs> I sure hope I added the laugh track. Furthermore, what if there was a watch that said Hydra and Strucker on it because she was being held by Hydra at one point and experimented on by Strucker and that's how she got her powers. Even though she signed up for that, according to Age of Ultron, but I'm sure it was so traumatic. See, the, the thing is, the show seems to be taking place in her mind. I'm pretty sure, at least, because if, if you know anything about Scarlet Witch, then you've, you're probably familiar with the House of M event. If not, I won't spoil too much about it, but the basic premise of that is something happens with Vision and it freaks her out and she kind of breaks reality. And I won't go into any more details about that, but if you've ever seen the, uh, okay, quick spoilers a little bit. If you've ever seen the phrase, no more mutants, that's from that. She says that and things happen. And uh, there's a bit of a callback to that here in the second episode. She says, no, multiple times. And the episode just kind of rewinds? And she does it over from where she wants to. And I'm like, okay, so she definitely has control over what's going on. What the hell is happening? We also know from the end of each episode that there seems to be some sort of person monitoring her because there's a voice asking, who's doing this to you, Wanda? So, somebody's clearly there with her physically or at least is trying to get in contact with her there's like that whole radio bit in the second episode by the way spoilers for wandavision if you haven't figured that out yet i'm sorry i'll probably put it on screen or in the description but um there, there's that bit with the radio where somebody's trying to like talk to her so i'm not sure if there is somebody on the outside trying to communicate with her but whatever is going on it's definitely strange could be Doctor Strange, we don't know. Benny was in that Zoom call, which is interesting to me. However, what I find more interesting is that we've seen in the trailer that they have been dressed like the 60s, whoops, the 50s, the 70s, and the 80s that I could pinpoint, and these two episodes were set in the 50s, so I have to assume that every set of two episodes will take, set in, will take place in a different era. There's also different intros for both of those episodes, so maybe every episode will have a different intro. That would be nice. Um, there's also some, like, irony. <laughs> because Wanda's first line in this show is, My husband and his indestructible head. And at first I was like, Well, yeah, it's, you know, it's vibranium. And then I was like, His head got crushed. <laughs> Thanos said, Kunk, and just ripped the Mind Stone out. So it's very ironic that she would say indestructible head when talking about Vision. And I'm just wondering, like, is she currently cognizant, right? Because she seemed to be in full possession of all of her marbles in Avengers Endgame all the way up to when they had that memorial for Tony. But I don't know. Now, that's the beauty of, of releasing, show, uh, releasing episodes with time in between them. You do get to sit and marinate on things 
speculate, theorize, have fun with what you're watching before the next episode is up. That's what I don't really like about shows that drop everything all at once. Because you watch it in a day and you forget what happened. Like two weeks later, it's like, you gotta rewatch it. Maybe that's the idea. Now, as far as the 50s theme in these episodes, as far as all that stuff is concerned, forgive me if I seem a little bit uneducated because I'm not too familiar with television from that era. But I, I believe that the first episode is supposed to give you the same vibe as, like, I Dream of Genie. I know that came after the 50s, at least I'm pretty sure it did. But, you know, Wanda's got these powers, and then there's a miscommunication, and Wanda and Vision have to figure it out, and Wanda's using her powers, and cool stuff like that happens. So, like, either I Dream of Genie or, like, Bewitched, but those both came quite a bit later. I don't know if there's anything from the actual 1950s that has that, but that, I think, is what they were going for. And then in the second episode, you have something that's maybe, like, the Honeymooners? Or maybe um, the Dick Van Dyke show. I'm not really sure. It's strange, right? It's it's definitely like what they're doing is very deliberate and intentional. And it's kind of the most interesting thing to come from Marvel Studios since Infinity War. Like, And I loved Endgame and I loved Far From Home. But this has more intrigue in the, in the first 48 minutes worth of content <laughs> than... Any any of Endgame had, at least in my opinion. And since I knew that Quentin Beck was Mysterio, and that Mysterio is one of Spider-Man's oldest villains, him being a bad guy wasn't much of a surprise to me. I'm sure it was to a few people. People that wanted to believe that live-action multiverse stuff. I will address that in its own video, I'm pretty sure. But I, I'm really not sure where this could be going. It's eight episodes, right? And we're already one-fourth of the way down. And then there's that, like... I actually can't remember exactly what it was. I think there was, like, a toy plane that was in color when everything else was in black and white. So maybe she's created this world of illusion and she's having trouble keeping it up in some areas. Like, she's... There, there are some weaknesses in the integrity of this world she's created or something like that. I also wanted to call attention to a very minor detail, but one that I really appreciated... Whenever Wanda has to, like, conjure something, like, in the first episode, she conjures, like, a new outfit, and then she conjures wedding rings for herself and Vision, they do this, like, really choppy editing where she does the magic and then the thing that's supposed to be there is now there, and you can tell that it's cut from one uh, take to the next, and it's... I have to believe it's intentional because they have really trained professionals at Marvel, so what I'm assuming is that it's supposed to give you the same vibe that I Dream of Genie and Bewitched do, where it's like they did their best to mask the edit, but you can definitely still tell because it's very, boom, the next thing. And so I really appreciate that they went the extra mile to do it that way, and I'm sure it bugged the editor's staff to make it like that. Also, nobody told me Paul Bettany was funny. He doesn't really do anything funny in the Avengers movies, or, I mean, like, he's got some, like, dry humor as Jarvis before he became Vision, but none of that really set me set me up for how funny he could actually be as shown in the this, this series. Also, I never expected to hear Vision sing Yakety Yak, but hey, it's where we are now. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I'm not crazy familiar with Scarlet Witch. I usually just know her as far as like her involvement in bigger stories like House of M or Ultimatum and the Ultimate Comics, stuff like that. However... I'm very interested to see who this beekeeper person from the second episode ends up being. I have my ideas. Well, I have an idea. Because we don't even know who the main antagonistic force on, on the show is going to be. I'm pretty sure it's Wanda. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, because of who she is and what she has done in the previous source material, there's no reason for me not to think that they're going to have to do something about her. Her. And I would love to see Doctor Strange in this show because of his involvement in House of M. Because um, another thing about House of M, the main heroes sought out Doctor Strange's help because they figured he was the only person that could deal with her chaos magic. And Doctor Strange is like, I'm the guardian of all things mystical and magical in this realm. There's no such thing as chaos magic. <laughs> so that was cool. But uh, honestly, this is just like 
there, there is so much that went on, and there was so much like subtle stuff. Also, this is just a genuinely funny show, so far at least. I'm sure it's going to be funny when it's supposed to be, and very dramatic when it's supposed to be. Also, Wanda ends up pregnant at the end of the second episode. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I think that this has really given us some reprieve. It's been a long time since anything MCU related has actually come out. Spider-Man Far From Home was the last thing. They were supposed to get Black Widow and Eternals last year. That didn't end up happening. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and even this, I believe, both got delayed. We don't know anything about when Loki is supposed to come out as far as I know. Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, those are all filming, I guess. Maybe Moon Knight's filming. Oscar was only confirmed to play uh, uh, Mark recently, so whatever. Overall, though, these two episodes were a solid introduction to what this show can and probably will be, and I'm very excited to see where it goes next week, the week after, and the week after that, um, if they continue this trend of dropping two episodes a week. I'm actually not sure if that's what they intend to do, but we'll find out next Friday. I actually don't really know. But, WandaVision, have you seen the first two episodes? Whatever it is, what did you think about them? Whatever it is, whatever you think about Blue Ninja Gaming, as always, for more videos, me, go ahead and click on the screen, and it will take you to another video of mine. See you soon.